the growth of mixed martial arts? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What, is it, what are my thoughts on it? Uh, it's one of those things where, where we will have to see if it's good or bad. I kind of have a feeling it's not a good thing. And there's things I like about it and there's things that I don't like about it. Um, th what I like about it is that it makes it easier to follow. The more popular something is, the, the more uh, buzz about something, the more coverage uh, of it, of something. I mean, I mean, back in the day, we were watching fighters. I had never even heard them even speak before. You know what I mean? We were just... It would just, I would like randomly see fights and I didn't even know, I mean a lot of it was fights that were taped, maybe they weren't real old, I didn't know who was going to win, but um, but I'd be watching them. Were they live? I don't even know. I used to watch Bodog fights, they used to come on uh, in the evenings and I would watch them and uh, I don't even know if those fights were, I mean they weren't live, but they weren't old, I don't even know, just random fights, but I didn't know who was going to win and I would just see fighters. I mean, I didn't really follow who was champion and everything. I mean, this was a long time ago. Um, but it was an underground thing. Like, these Bodog fights would come on, you know, it'd be real late at night. And that wasn't even that long ago. Um, mixed martial arts has, has grown a lot. And, uh, but it was always underground. It was always kind of an underground thing. People didn't really know it. Um, the fighters weren't making very much money, which... Everybody says, oh man, they need to make more money and all this and that. But the thing is, here's the thing with that. What drove me and probably drove a lot of people to watch mixed martial arts, especially, you know, years ago. I can't really say for, for that are people that are noobs. I mean, I've been watching mixed martial arts since like the IFL. I remember when the IFL hadn't even come out yet. They were talking about the IFL. And... You know, it's like, oh, cool, we get to watch the IFL, and that was very current. That was really like the first time that I watched mixed martial arts, like literally current, you know what I mean? You know, like Pride, I mean, Pride was hard to follow because it was overseas, and, and I didn't have cable at the time. I would end up watching some fights at a friend's house, and the, and the UFC was like that too. You you know, someone else had cable, I could come over and watch the UFC, but I didn't really know. I mean, I remember watching Chuck Liddell and stuff, but I don't even know how current those fights were. They weren't live. Maybe they were. Some weren't. Some weren't. Some were recordings. It didn't really matter, but I kind of knew. I knew who the fighters were. You know, we're talking years and years ago. I mean, we're talking a long time ago. In the 90s, we're talking about. Um, so... So that's one thing that, that is cool about it being more popular with the internet and everything. It makes it so much easier to follow and you can watch people's opinions and, and stuff. But, you know, even as, like, man, like you say around 2005, 2006, I mean, MMA was still very underground. And that's one of the things I don't like about it being mainstream. It's like, it's like, it's like we've completely forgotten the history of it. And it's like nobody even cares about the history of it. And me, as somebody that talks about mixed martial arts on YouTube, I deal with a lot of, um, I get emails. Most of them I just delete. I don't even read them anymore. And we are talking about what I like about MMA and what I don't like about MMA. I get these emails coming in from people who obviously have not been watching mixed martial arts for very long. I can tell they haven't been watching mixed martial arts very, for very long by their comments. They'll tell me something that, well, you know, this guy beat this person. It's like, I know they beat that person. Just because I don't mention every little thing in a video, uh, I'm very well aware of what's going on. You know, they'll say, oh, well, you know, Connor fought it. He, he fought it bigger weight, Clarence. And I'm like, I know that. I'm talking about the UFC, dude. You know, where they'll talk about, one of the, one, the main ones that really bothers me is, I've been a big fan of women's MMA forever. I've always watched women's MMA. I watched, like I said, Bodog and Strike Force. I mean, this was a whole long time ago. I mean, I remember watching Tara La Rosa destroy pretty much all the girls, you know, at least um, in, in American culture and in European and American culture. Um, 
Terra La Rosa destroyed everybody. Do you ever hear any other female mentioning Terra La Rosa? I, I don't ever. I know none of these girls nowadays they even mention this girl. This girl's record was better than any of these girls that are fighting nowadays, and she would destroy all these. She destroyed everybody, and she was doing it for no money. It wasn't a popularity contest. I mean, she wasn't as pretty as a lot of these girls now, but. I mean, I have a lot of respect for Terra La Rosa because they talk about, you know, Ronda Rousey being a pioneer. What are you talking about, pioneer? This, these girls have been doing this for years and years and years. And even Shayna Baszler. I mean, Shayna Baszler is my all-time favorite uh, female fighter. I watched this girl for years and years and years. And I'm kind of getting off subject a little bit. But see, I kind of liked it when it was underground. You know, like people are like, man, you want to watch Tara La Rosa over some girl like Misha Tate? Look, I know Misha Tate is fine. She's fine as all hell. She got a booty. She got some fake titties, by the way. I like Misha Tate. I like girls that are attractive than our fighters. But I'm just saying we have other means of things. We of I try to keep it clean. You know what I mean? We have other things to watch if you want to watch TNA. I watch plenty of TNA. You know, outside of fighting, don't worry. You know, but the thing is, like, what I'm saying is, it's like when something becomes mainstream, you know, people forget. It it just it changes everything, is what I'm saying. It's not as raw. It's not as it's not as raw. It's not just raw and its purity. It's not as real. You know, take Conor McGregor for example. I get a lot of comments about Conor McGregor. If I say anything about Conor McGregor. And the whole reason Conor McGregor acts the way he does, which I do not, I'm do not i not an advocate of. I mean, nobody acted like that years ago. When there's no money in it, and if there wasn't money, if it was just fighting, would Conor McGregor be acting like that? Absolutely not. He wouldn't be acting so um, uh, braggadocious. And, and so he wouldn't act like that. The only reason he's acting like that is because he started doing a lot of that, and he got good response from it. Everybody... You know, people egged him on. They egged him on, so he kept doing it more and more. It's, you know, what happened to being a humble or just, I'm just a fan of fighting. I mean, I'm not a fan of that. That That is, to me, is theatrics and, and drama. That's something I'm not interested in. You know, it's soap opera. I don't watch soap operas. Theatrics, that's WWE. I don't watch WWE or whatever it's called. I don't watch that theatrics. I don't need that. Um, it doesn't make a fight any better for me as a fan. I'm not interested in that. The proof of that is, is I watched MMA long before anybody, before anybody did that. And then these guys started coming into MMA and doing it. And it brings a lot of people who wouldn't, who would know, you know, in other words, it was this little tiny bubble of true fight fans, these people that made their way to mixed martial arts. I come from... Watching baseball and NBA. I'm from Chicago. I watched all the Michael Jordan years. I was a huge basketball fan. I don't watch NBA anymore. I don't watch baseball anymore. I watched those those sports for years and years and years, and I lost interest. Of course, I'm, I was a skateboard kid, so I always had that subculture. And then when I got older, I you know, quit skating, and I kind of found mixed martial arts right at, at that time. Um... You know, when I was maybe 19 years old, 19, 20 years old, right around that time. And, uh, you know, I, I got into, into mixed martial arts as a subculture. So when you start bringing in things, like when it grows in popularity, you start getting, basically you get all the dorks, man. A subculture is a little bubble of really cool people that have an interest in something exactly, exactly like yours. You know, or something like baseball, you, you, you could have people that are fans of baseball that you, you have nothing in common with and you don't even like them as a person. Whereas when something is a really small subculture, there's a much more chance that if you meet somebody that is in that little bubble that, that your personalities will mesh. And, uh, and that's what I'm saying. I remember one time about 10 years ago, I was in the gym, I was a personal trainer, and I uh, I ran into somebody, 
And we were just talking, and he asked me a question about some exercise or something. And somehow we started talking about mixed martial arts. And we were talking, I mean, I was talking Shayna Baszler and all these fighters and, you know, Fedor. This guy knew every, every single person. And I was just like completely blown away. I'm like that somebody would know who Shayna Baszler is. I was just like completely, just completely blown away. And it was like we were just instant friends. And like, you know, every time I seen him, I'm like, oh, what's up, man? Whereas I was like, you have to say to p hi to people in the gym that you don't even couldn't even I would talk to people all day but it was you know a lot of it was small talk it was very seldom that I got to talk something talk about something that I was interested in so here I am I met one person like in all these years that that knew about mixed martial arts I mean I never ran into anybody I didn't none of my friends nobody knew about MMA I mean maybe your average person maybe would know like I said like Chuck Liddell or something or you know or GSP or they you know, they would mention something like one of my friends, and it would be from like 10 years ago. Oh, is I used to like, who's that guy that beat George St. Pierre? I used to like that guy. I'm like, you know, like, <laughs> let's talk about stuff from, you know, a long time. That's like current, somebody would say that, that doesn't know MMA. And that's kind of like what it was. So, but what I'm saying is when it was a subculture, when it was not as popular, because it's still pretty underground, um... I liked it better because it was more just in its purity. It was in its purity of, of fighting. Uh, was the fighting as good? You know, probably not because, you know, people had to work jobs. Um, you know, and stuff like that. I don't want to get too, too much on a tangent. But basically, the growth of MMA, in my mind, and, and paying fighters more is... Uh, is not a good thing. Take Nick Diaz, for example. Uh, Nick, Nick Diaz, his running strike force, I mean, I, I, I can't ever remember when I was more excited about watching a fighter fight than when Nick Diaz was in strike force. And just, it's like he kept getting better and better and just terrorizing these guys. And it was so entertaining and it just made me such a fan of Nick Diaz. So let's bring money into the picture. Now, Nick Diaz, he was making 200 grand. For some of those fights, uh, you know, around that that area, you know, fighting Paul Daly and some of these other people. Don't quote me. I mean, I was fights he was making seventy five grand, but he worked his way up, so he was getting some decent paychecks. But fast forward to him fighting Anderson Silva, which Nick surprisingly looked good. He really looked good against Anderson in that fight. Now here's the thing. They paid Nick Diaz a bunch of money. He showed up in that fight. I don't... I don't know what he was thinking. Because... Anderson Silva's confidence was a little bit shattered in that fight. You know, be coming into that fight. Nick Diaz probably could have beat Anderson Silva if he had got after him. But... I think it was one of those things. It's like Nick Diaz has been quote-unquote retired or semi-retired. And they pay him a bunch of money. Pay him 500 grand to show up. I think his attitude was, you know, yeah, I'm going to fight, but I'm going to stand right here and just make a spectacle. He just didn't, he didn't seem like he cared if he won. And when he was in strike force, when Nick Diaz was in strike force and he wasn't getting paid as much money, and when he, you know, believe me, it meant a lot to him to win. It meant a lot. And... He he was he was taking it very serious. If he was if he was smack talking, he was doing it right in your face. He was doing it for a purpose, and it wasn't just uh, I mean, just a, just a clown act. And that's what that fight to me was. Watching Nick Diaz is just it's because you're paying him a bunch of money. You know, if he wasn't getting paid all that money, you know what I mean. And this was going to be for twenty grand. And if he lose, if he lost, maybe his next fight. He's only going to make ten grand, and you know he can, he's still trying to work his way up. Believe me, he's not going to be standing in the center of the cage, just standing there, which is entertaining and everything. And it did actually it proves a point too. It's like, come on, let's fight. You know, these guys don't want to fight. I get it, but the thing is, it's it, it kind of ruins the sport, man. It makes it, it makes a mockery. It makes a mockery out of out of fighting. When you're paying guys a bunch of money, that it it doesn't 
You know, it's like guys calling people out. You admit Michael Bisping is a champion. He's calling people out that aren't even in the top five or even top ten. Or he's calling people who aren't even in the division. And I'm just like, what is going on here? You know, it's kind of making a mockery of fighting. And, you know, the fighting, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, say what you want, it was real. Uh, people say fake fights in pride, but all the fighting that I watched, man, I've seen some real fighting. The IFL was very real. The guys were making very little money. These are just true, true fighters. And it was just in its purity, and it was underground. And it's what made, it's what gravitated me to mixed martial arts. You know, it is what gravitated me to mixed martial arts. So when you're growing it, if it gets as big as baseball and, and uh, WWE and all this nonsense, and you start acting like all these other things, that WWE, that fake wrestling, I've always hated that stuff. I've never like that stuff. I could never even watch it, even for five minutes. Even as a little kid, I was like, this is stupid. Why is it stupid? It's not real. Why would I want to watch this? When I could put in skate videos and watch something that's that's real, someone skating, you know, gr grinding down a handrail or doing a 360 kickflip, that's as real as it gets. Why well, don't I want to watch something fake? And that's what MMA is kind of becoming. It's It's becoming... Uh, it's becoming fake, and there's all these reality shows and everything on cable. I don't even own a television, so I don't know about that stuff. But it's like a lot of drama. Like that's man, that's like soap opera. Watching soap operas and stuff, man. I I I, I do not think that place that that stuff has any place in fighting. And I I ultimately think that uh, if MMA continues to grow, that uh, for me as a fight fan. It will, um, I don't know how big it would have to get, mixed martial arts, for to, to where I wouldn't even follow it anymore. Um, but it's going in that direction. I, it's, it's a long way away from me not wanting to watch and follow, because obviously I do still follow the UFC. And, uh, you know, but I, I, I do think that the growth and, and popularity of MMA is uh, ultimately not a good thing. And I'm sure people can make a million cases, drug testing and all this, the, the why it would be better if it's more popular. Fighters will get more money. But that's not what attracted me. I'm not saying people shouldn't get money, but I I don't... It's better when they don't. I mean, I'd almost rather watch a fighting organization where there was no pay. It was for charity <laughs> or something like that. Because you're going to have the real fighters there, and you're going to have all this nonsense, and Conor McGregor's, and just... And the thing is, Conor's a great fighter. I'm not even knocking Conor McGregor. Like I said, I believe he just acted like that because people egged him on. He used to be more jokey, and... I mean, he's a, he's a very entertaining fighter. That's the part of Conor McGregor I like. I don't like the other part of Con Conor McGregor, and I don't like the fans and that he attracts. It's like WWE stuff, and you know, Brock Lesnar and all this nonsense. I, I'm not interested in seeing that. If, well, actually, Brock Lesnar coming in and being in a real fight, that actually is very fascinating. When uh, he came in and uh, when Frank Mir, what, he put an ankle lock on him? Like, a I forget. But that was really, really cool. That was really, really cool. I'm not going to lie. So, but yeah, but just the popularity of, of mixed martial arts is... Uh, if it, it's getting popular for the wrong reasons, I'm going to say that one more time and I'm going to end this because I'm ranting, but it's getting popular for the wrong reasons. If MMA grew because people were true fans of fighting and more and more people got into it, but that's not why it's growing. It's growing for other reasons. Drama, uh, just, I don't know. It, it's becoming a spectacle, and I, and I don't like it. I'll see you guys later.